Hey, what is going on today? You know, most of my videos are from the field, but I thought we'd do something different today. So I'm at the University of Wyoming uh, in the Department of Geology and Geophysics. This is actually where I did my college and graduate school days. I thought we'd take a look in the collection room. You know, it's not often the public gets to see what's in the paleontology collections. I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you guys around. It's all public information anyway. It's just not something that many people get a chance to see. Let's go and see what's behind the door. If I had a perfect day, I would have it start this way. Open okay, we're in the hallowed halls of academia. There's a whole bunch of shelving behind me that's got all sorts of great fossils on it. And then there's all these cases. They're called lane cases, lane cabinets made by a lane company. And inside all of these are fossils. Big fossils, little fossils, invertebrates, vertebrates, plants, you name it, they're in here. So I thought we'd just kind of take a look around, see what's in here, you know, and just have a tour of the collections. Ready? Let's spin it around and take a look. All right, so taking our first look around, here's some cabinets off to the right. Interesting specimens in here. There's some turtle footprints, and we're still trying to figure out where they came from. Uh, we're not sure exactly what formation or what unit, but we're checking the records. This is a slab of the Windy Hill sandstone with some pterosaur tracks on it. They're a little bit faint, but they're there along the rippled marks. Um, nice big ammonite. There's a beautiful mosasaur skull that had been on display, but has been removed for study and some repairs. We got an allosaurus arm cast, and a lot of this material here is used for education. Some sauropod, big dinosaur vertebrae. Ooh, look at that nice piece of petrified wood under a chunk of, I don't know what. Um, these are various dinosaur bones. They're in the process of being studied. Uh, these are Jurassic, they're from the Morris information. So they're sauropods most likely, like Camarasaurus or Diplodocus. There's a nice little display of theropod dinosaur teeth. Again, these are largely for educational purposes. Um, then we've got the cabinets. And in these cabinets, we'll take a look through a couple of them that are interesting. There's everything from the most recent, which is Pleistocene, um, Irvingtonians. This is all within the last few tens of thousands of years. Uh, we've got some Miocene, so, you know, going back about five, ten million years. And before we get into the cabinets, let's just keep looking through the really interesting display cases. Here's a cool one. This is an elasmosaur. And I can't tell you too much about it because it's under study, um, but it's apparently a really rare one. It's only the second one known from North America, I'm told. It's one of those long necked plesiosaurs. So these are the vertebrae. It's complete from the tip of the head, we're connected to the head, to the tip of the tail. No ribs, no nothing else, just the vertebrae. So that's kind of peculiar. But check this out. There's a bunch more dinosaur specimens. These are all, again, Morrison. And each one of these has an identifying number, location information, and that's all in a computerized database. So we can track it down, we know exactly what the stuff is. There's a plesiosaur paddle, big Loch Ness monster looking thing. Oh, that's cool, that's an ichthyosaur skull. Big fish lizard, they're called. There's the eye socket, there's the jaws with the teeth. Pretty impressive. Ooh, yeah, really nice turtles up here. There's soft-shelled turtles like that one. There are some tortoises, and those are all from the Cenozoic. Those are probably back there from the White River Formation. So that's that big volcanoclastic section that's common in Wyoming. Here's another nice turtle shell with a modern one as an analog for comparison. A lot of times we compare ancient fossils to modern specimens of known animals to try to identify what they are. Um, that doesn't work with dinosaurs. There's a stegosaurus skull back there lurking amongst the other material. There's one of his tail spikes. So again, this is a lot of Morris information material. Those are femora. That's thigh bones from various sauropods. It looks like Diplodocus and Apatosaurus. Some more vertebrae and limb bones. Even on the upper shelf here, there's some Cenozoic things like horse skulls, uh, looks like some antlers, various skulls of um, areodactyls and perissodactyls, so hoofed ungulate animals. We've got, of course, you got to have the big ferocious um, 
big like archaeothere from again the White River Formation probably so Eocene, Oligocene, hominid skulls we've got or I guess a human skull for comparative anatomy and it looks like chaos and it sort of is but believe it or not this is all cataloged and as you can imagine it's hard to find places to store this stuff so even though it looks like it's just kind of piled uh, and to some degree it is but we actually know where everything is and what it is there's some comparative modern horses it looks like that one didn't do too well somebody had to take it out um, this is another exciting one this is a turtle that a friend of mine is interested in working in he's in switzerland now uh, but this is a turtle that was discovered in 1965 it's a huge soft shell turtle i mean you can see by the size of it it's about the size of a dinner table um, collected in 65 and nobody's actually described it formally so my friend is going to do that um, so i did a 3d scan of it earlier today here's some more windy sorry um windy hill sandstone specimens a bunch more um, there's some algal stromatolite material another turtle so a whole bunch of different fossils here along with you know comparative modern specimens like i mentioned and this is the lab facility where we do a lot of um, research with microscopes there's a super digital one that's really nice um, a friend of mine who works here she's the lab manager uh, and we used this a couple of months ago on some specimens i had just takes insanely cool um, high resolution images and going around the corner look at this even more specimens here's a chicken along with a deer um, there's a Pleistocene bison cast a saber-toothed skull there's a Uintathir skull those are those big weird rhino looking things that had the slingshot nose horn not as big as a lot of people think I mean it's a pretty good sized animal but not quite as enormous as sometimes portrayed um, various comparative cow skulls and big horn sheep looks like some dentaries of I don't know what that is some big ungulate there's a tyrannosaur tyrannosaurus rex dentary uh, here's a cart with various things on it that whoever was using it last has got it all nicely labeled we do a lot of education here so there's a constant state of specimens being moved and removed and so on well, if you're ready, we can take a look in some of these cases. In fact, let me show you through my thesis collection because that's something I'm pretty happy with and I know something about, so I wouldn't be just babbling. Um, actually, take a look at that. That's really cool. That's from the Green River Formation. Uh, stingray with a little Prisca cara. It's like a little sunfish. Actually, it looks a lot like a modern bluegill. If you go bluegill fishing, you'll probably catch things that look a lot like that. Same kind of fins and everything and pretty nice size stingray all right let's look in the cabinets so the cretaceous lance ferris formation had a basin this is all my stuff um continues up there and there's some more around the corner but let me just show you what's in here so this is my thesis collection there's big chunks of dinosaur material here including a ceratopsian brain case we collected this one i want to say it was 1992 uh, i don't think it was 91 i think we collected it in 92 but this is the occipital condyle this is with the neck attached to the ceratopsian's head and by ceratopsian i'm talking something like triceratops or torosaurus that is where the spinal cord came out so the spinal cord came from the brain which is around the corner through here and connected with its spine so they had this big ball and socket joint so they can move their giant heads around this is a dentary, so in other words, that's his lower jaw, and these were found together. So we've got the lower jaw, no teeth, and a brain case, and that's all we found. It was in a river deposit, so the rest of it probably got carried downstream sometime back in the Cretaceous. But here's other chunks of dinosaur bone. Not super exciting, and they're covered in siderite, which is an iron concretion. So it's a lot of ironstone in this formation, and that's from a combination of a lot of... Um, organic material from leaves and plants but also a lot of standing water so there's fresh water mixing with marine water there's brackish water which led to the development of siderite and the next drawer down we've got what we used to call chunkosaurus it's just chunks of dinosaur we're not sure what it is not very exciting stuff 
there's some somewhat identifiable dinosaur chunks. Um, again, not a whole heck of a lot. It's probably Ceratopsian. Now we're getting somewhere. These are the bits and pieces that include things like little individual teeth that are identifiable. These are gar scales. We find hundreds, thousands of gar scales because gar were very common then, just like they are in the modern Texas area. Um, they like the warm tropical or at least temperate rivers that are kind of slow moving, just like in modern day Texas. Here's all these specimens that include things like lizards, frogs, dinosaurs, mammals even. So pretty much everything you can imagine, just like you'd find today. These are some more fragments of dinosaurs, fish, crocodilians like crazy. This is kind of a fun one. That's a fossil turd, believe it or not. That is coprolite. It's a fossil poop. Now, we don't know what made that. It could have been a crocodile, it could have been a dinosaur, um, but it's definitely a fossil poop. There's even little chunks of bone in it. So somebody ate something that had bone and then pooped it out. Here's some more Chunkosaurus. Not a lot to say about that. Here are some nice ones. There's uh, Notosaurus scute. So that's something like Denversaurus. And there's a whole bunch of Denversaurus type scutes in this. There's some turtle shell fragments. This is a squamosal horn from Stygimoloch. It's a pachycephalosaur, a boneheaded dinosaur. And there's not many of these known. And I actually found this one in several fragments and I had to glue it back together. And I found that one in, I think it was 1995. So I don't want to bore you to tears with my thesis collection stuff. I'll talk about that in a different video about the KPG boundary. Let me just show you some other specimens that are in these cabinets that are pretty interesting. Getting up into the Eocene, this is a cool cabinet here. Not many people know about these things, but there's some really nice bird fossils. There's the wing, looks just like a modern chicken wing if you eat those. There's the keel, the sternum, and there's a tiny, tiny little leg, maybe something like a little kingfisher or some such thing. But these were all from the Green River Formation, that big lake deposit in western Wyoming. Here's some more birds, undescribed. But there's a little bird, that's the wing, that's the fingers of the hand, just like a modern chicken. That's the ulna and radius, that's humerus. Again, you know, birds are little theropod dinosaurs, so it makes sense it would look a lot like a theropod, like a little dromaeosaur. Here's the ribs. Here's some more fragments of birds and whatever else. There's a lot of fish. That is potentially a fish. And then, wow, look at this. That is cool. Plants and fish. There's little Tilios type bony fish. There's the spines of a fish. Oh, these aren't plants. What am I saying? I'm crazy. These are actually fish spines. Man, if only somebody knew what they were talking about making this video. There's a nice little fish, tiny, tiny. Looks like a little stingray there. That's a cute little devil. And look at that tiny little shrimpy things too. A little freshwater shrimp or saltwater lacustrine shrimp. So there's all this cool stuff you know, just row after row of it. And as you can see, case after case of it. So interested scholars come here and go through the specimens, work on studies, write them up, hopefully publish it. And again, it's all here, it's all public. You have to have a reason to want to see this stuff. Um, you can't just walk in and say, hey, show me fossils. But if you have a good reason, um, or if you can talk the curators into giving you a a guided tour, you might be able to see some of this. There was an earlier, uh, today there was a tour of some people who are descendants of William Harlow Reed. This is cool. This is Green River Formation again. And you can see these are mud cracks, but in among them, um, there's these little bird tracks. So bird track, bird track. There's some bird tracks over here in amongst the mud cracks of the old ancient lake. Unfortunately, as you can see, no locality data. That's bad, we don't like that. Because you have these great specimens, but where'd they come from? Well, shoot, who knows? And you know, these are really cool because these are footprints that show 
dabbling. That's where the beak of the little bird was kind of po 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 poking. He was dabbing in the mud to collect food. Uh, modern flamingos do that. Little sandpipers do that. You might have seen them. So it's cool. It's a nice specimen, but unfortunately, we don't know where it came from because there's no locality data. Now, that's one reason we always ask the public, if you're going to collect things, please, please, please record where it came from. Um, because, you know, it's great to have all these specimens. If we don't know where it's from or what rock unit, it's kind of useless. All right. What else have we got? Let's take a look. Take a look up this one. Ooh, a ligocene. I don't know what's in here. Oh, my, my. We got some interesting things going on in the oligocene. Look at this. There's some of those big ancient pig-like things, the archaeotheres. Really scary looking. That is this guy. So we've got some specimens of that here in the Oligocene. Not too shabby. And we've got, ooh, look at that skull. Maybe a hyenodont or something. I don't want to mess with it. A lot of this stuff is pretty delicate, so you don't want to mess with it. That's an oreodont. Um, they're very common. They, a lot of these are finding their way onto the market, like eBay and whatnot. People call them like pig sheep or um, pig somethings, because they kind of look like old pig sheep sort of creatures. Um, those are just empty. So interesting stuff in the legacy. So you get the feel for what's in these cabinets, just row after row of all sorts of interesting fossils. And new ones being collected every year, every day actually. So that was my quick and dirty tour through the collections here at the University of Wyoming. Now you've got a feel for what is back here in the back rooms of museums and universities. Uh, when you wonder, like you see this great stuff on display, but what's happening behind the scenes? Is there anything happening behind the scenes? There's a lot happening behind the scenes. In fact, this is where most of the action happens. This is where all the research happens. This is where the studies are happening. Um, it's, it's pretty active. There's nobody here right now because I'm here after hours. I didn't want to bother anybody. So everybody's gone home for the day except for old Dr. Anton. Um, you know, hey, this is what I do, right? Hey, let me know what you thought of this. If you enjoyed the tour, give me a comment below. Um, if you didn't, keep it to yourself. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you on the outcrop or in a museum somewhere near you. Take it easy.